candid, captivating, compelling. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina. Listen in as Dr. Dina, medical marijuana pioneer and inspiration for the award-winning TV series, Weeds, shares never-before-heard stories, chats with cannabis insiders and celebrity friends, and provides invaluable perspective and insight into one of the fastest-growing industries in the world. CannabisRadio.com proudly presents Cannabis Confidential with your host, Dr. Dina. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential. I'm your hostess with the mostest when it comes to cannabis. I'm Dr. Dina. Thank you for joining us again. Today we have such a special guest. In fact, I almost don't even need to say a word. Maybe I should be asking just a few questions and let this guy, incredible man, speak. But today we have a very Jeez. special, very special guest. So a lot of people out there always ask me, this is something that I get asked a lot, but they are always worried if they're going to get too high during treatment if they have cancer and I, I'm going to give them some cannabis oil. And I always explain, I have kids taking the same dose and the kid is fine. And they look at me like I'm nuts. And the father of usually that one child that I usually refer to because he's my one of my favorite patients out there because he's so damn adorable, I could eat him up like a cookie. His name is Waldo. And Waldo... Mm -hmm is a special patient and we're going to get into why Waldo is such a special patient because today we have his father Brian on the phone who's going to talk about his journey with this very special boy and welcome Brian first of all it's I feel very welcome Dina thank you so much <laughs> on behalf of Waldo and all of Waldo's crew uh, I'm honored to speak to you today Oh, well, thank you. And please give your lovely wife and Waldo's mom, Danielle, a big hug and kiss for me. So let's talk about when the day that Waldo was born. It was a very special day. And why was that special, Brian? Yeah, it was pretty mystical. I mean, it was kind of like the beginning of some Tim Burton movie or something. I don't know. There was a lot of strange stars aligning. But basically, Waldo was born on a palindrome. His birth date was 4 14, 14. And it, he was born under a blood moon, and he almost weighed 14 pounds. It was a weird day. 14 pounds. Was it thir – how much did he weigh? 13 pounds, 8.5 ounces or something? Yeah, his technical, his technical weigh-in after a few tries was 13 pounds, 8.5 ounces. Jeez. That's what he clocked in It's like the kind biggest Viking. baby ever. Yeah, he, he was, was – they said he was one of the biggest – yeah, he was, he was cooking there for a long time, and he was ready to come out. When we finally brought him out, you know, the C-section obviously, you know, the whole city of Philly basically said, I don't know a bigger baby. So – I guess I could say on the record that Waldo is one of the largest babies ever born in the city of Philadelphia. Well, that is a pretty I think cool so. title. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it's a pretty I, I saw the pictures. I saw those pictures of him when his little baby checkup at the hospital, at the doctor's office, and he looks like he's a year old already. He's this giant baby. Yeah, yeah, it was a weird thing. I mean, when he was born, I thought he was big, but I had no idea that the entire world would kind of treat it like a international kind of fluff piece piece of information, sort of like a jet skiing squirrel or something. It was so just, he, everybody he started the talking about the day he was born. So, so after that, it's yeah. kind of hard, you know, how do you really keep up with that? But then tell me about that one day where you noticed something wasn't right. Yes. Well, after all of the hullabaloo around his size and being in Russian news and Canadian news and all that, about six months later, this very healthy child that we were just getting to know, while he was diagnosed with a very rare form of eye cancer, we had noticed a strange reflection in one of his eyeballs. We took him into the pediatric uh, appointment and sure enough, within a half hour, they were rushing us to the emergency room and saying, we need to get this, this reflection looked at. And as it turned out, it was a tumor. It was eye cancer. And the technical, I guess, description of the cancer is bilateral retinoblastoma. Those are so scary words to hear as a parent. Yeah, it's kind of uncharted territory. It's, it's, it's a place that no new parent really wants to have to chart as far as territory goes. But when we heard it, we, for the first time, had to look modern medicine in the face and really say, well, what? Okay, so he's got cancer. How do we treat it? Naturally, we were told chemotherapy. So we started doing research on what that entails, and it scared the shit out of us. What part of it scared you uh, the most? Well, it's not that – it's not like I don't like modern medicine, but I can say that as a couple, as a family, if we have a headache, we're the kind of people that would drink water before we take pills. We're those kind of people. The thing that scared us was the laundry list of – opiates, steroids, and narcotics that were going to be pumped into our son's body that following week. It was pretty unsettling, to say the least. And how old was he at that time? He was just about six months old. 
Wow. And so all this yeah. is just terrifying just to, you know, for especially people like you and Danielle who don't really go towards the, the medicinal route to know that yeah, they want to pump this into your kid. We were, we were nervous, but, you know, we, we walked into the hospital and went into it open-mindedly because, you know, what do we know? We're just two new parents. So we, we sat back and watched. This and of course, you want to do happened. everything you can for your yeah. child too. You're not going to absolutely. Say no. that, that was what you know. We trust the doctors. We we do trust doctors. But the thing is, being in one of the best hospitals in the you know the world of Western medicine, it was startling to see how very little attention is paid to things beyond the bags of clear liquids they give kids. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad stuff in those bags. And I guess, well, would you like to know what happened next? I absolutely like do. I absolutely yeah. do. So that Monday when we got the diagnosis, I had no idea what we were going to do. It was a very somber evening. Two of my very good friends brought me over to their house, sat me down and said, all right, man, your kid's got cancer. What are we going to do about this? And I looked at them and said, what do you mean? What are we going to do about this? I mean, what can we do? There's chemotherapy starts in a couple of days. And they slid the phone over and kind of just blew my mind with different stories of children who had been treated with cannabis oil for various diseases. i had never really seen this, you know, plant that way. I loved it uh, as, a, as a thing I used recreationally, but I never saw it as a sacred medicine. And that's when I was introduced to you. And so Waldo's story was brought to your doorstep. You didn't even think about it. You saw a picture of Waldo, heard the story and said, okay, get here. Let me see if I can help you. And that thus began the journey. That was a, an amazing journey that started from that very moment. I think that I'm just as uh, lucky that you contacted and you found me that, you know, I found you. And I think that it goes both ways. And I think it's such a touching story. And it, it really, when I find people like you who understand that Western medicine isn't the devil and we're not telling people to skip chemotherapy, but there's a way mm. to make it more tolerable for your family member, whether it's yourself, your mom, your grandma, or your child. And mm. it's not a bad thing. And I think that, you know, your story is really going to help a lot of people out there to say, wait a second, what was I scared of? Because I personally just lost one of my sorority sisters to cancer and she, well, actually not even to cancer. Oh, I lost her to the treatment. I lost her to stem cell treatment. And I had wanted to, her to use cannabis and she wasn't, she was afraid of the stigma. And so, you know, getting your story out and getting people to understand that don't be afraid of the stigma. This plant is, it's so important and there's a really a powerful substance, whether it's the CBD or the THC or this compound that we haven't even recognized yet because the government won't let us test on it. But there's something powerful in this sacred plant, like you said, that we really need to focus on. And we can't forget that we're holding the answer. It's like we have this box, this Pandora's box, and, and there's a key, and we just need to open it. And it was I really mean, incredible the, that you guys were able to, to motivate and get out to California. I mean, there are so many points you just made that I resonate deeply with. For the sake of time, I will speak to the one about why I'm sharing this story, to be sure. I feel compelled to share this, not because I think my situation is some uh, super tragic thing. In fact, it's the opposite. My story, the one that Waldo and I share with, with our crew, is a very hopeful story. And it's because we're the lucky ones, because we just so happen to know the right people who knew the right people and had enough money to even travel to find this medicine and get it home and do it illegally. You know, I mean, I, I, that's obviously should be it's inferred. But, yeah, it's not legal out here in the East Coast where, where it is legal. It's it's the whole conversation is pretty. Uh, for lack of a better term, it's it's missing a lot well, of things. Well, you know, and, currently in California, there's a gray area. And, you know, yeah. just like how when you came out to California and you guys had to go see a doctor to get your doctor's note, there there's always a doctor mm -hmm. that will write a recommendation. At that point, once you have a doctor's recommendation, I can't turn you down. You're going to come in. You've already <laughs> seen a doctor. It's not up to me to decide whether or not yeah. you're going to seek treatment. It's up to a doctor. So once a doctor says you can come in, at that point, you can purchase your medicine, and at LAX Airport, you can fly out of LAX with your medicine as long as you have a medical marijuana note. So with that said, you know, what you did wasn't necessarily illegal until you got home, and that's where the <laughs> yeah, laws are changing. Really. The laws well, are changing. And that's, you know. They truly are. I mean, the, the day after Senate Bill 3 in Pennsylvania was passed, 
it just so happened that, you know, we decided to go public. And it's a pretty gray area out here. But again, why I feel compelled to share is, is for the thousands of people that I met and, and haven't met that have a story much less hopeful than the one I have. I mean, That's you know, great. to bring it up to the, to the people listening, present day, Waldo's tumor free. He's got both his eyeballs. He's got his health. He's great. He's still huge. I mean, he's, he's only two, but he's almost, you know, 30, uh, almost 30 pounds. He's huge. Uh, oh, he's, he's doing great. And the thing that I, I really feel like talking about with people when I, and I've been telling you, there's been hundreds of people that come up to me on the street, taxi drivers, gas stations. It doesn't matter. People in Philly are talking about this now. And the fact that all of them are talking to me in a hopeful tone makes me think, well, geez, this conversation is long overdue with everybody. Like the That's people right. on the street. That's right. Believe Hold in this Brian, we're going to have I- to take a short break and we're going to come back. We're going to talk more about this because it's so important. And mm. I'm totally 100 percent, you know, behind you and on your side. And I want everyone to hear your story. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with Waldo's dad, Brian Pizza Brian from Philly. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. The next generation of vaporizers has arrived. Vuber vaporizers are blazing the way with unparalleled technology for oil, concentrate, or dry flower pens. Providing unsurpassed customer service and expert craftsmanship, Vuber vaporizers use cutting-edge technology, providing a power-packed, smoother vapor with a lifetime guarantee. Experience vaporizing the way it was meant to be, the Vuber way. Northwest Alternative Health, Eugene's premier medical marijuana clinic, is proud to sponsor the Oregon Marijuana Business Conference. Are you prepared for the changes in the recreational and medical marijuana markets? The OMB presents the state's top industry experts, along with over 40 exhibitors, and features a keynote by Dr. Carl Hart. Also, tickets include a celebrity interview and private after party with the one and only Tommy Chong. Join us Sunday, April 24th at the downtown Eugene Hilton and be a part of Oregon's fastest growing industry. Check out OregonMBC.com for more details. Previously on the Stoner Jesus Show. We do have John McAfee. He's running for the Libertarian Party nomination for president. What makes <laughs> someone like you want to take the reins of this? We're so far behind. It's frightening. And in a cyber war, we can't hack into the Chinese. Back in 1979, they started building cyber defense systems. We didn't even think about it until 20 years ago. I, I've seen no candidates and certainly no one within government capable of dealing with this issue. The Stoner Jesus Show, live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Or find the Stoner Jesus Show podcast on demand at CannabisRadio.com and StonerJesus.net. Peace, bitches. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential, only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back with Pizza Brian, Waldo's dad. So, Brian, back to Waldo. You got, yeah. you were able to acquire your cannabis CBD oil, which was very, mm-hmm. very low dose THC. You guys were able to mix it with coconut oil, correct? Yes. And it was a very uh, non-invasive project. Yeah, you medicated your child with that. How how did it feel the first time you gave it to him? Were you were you nervous? It was like something out of a you know an old Western film. I mean, it was it was midnight. It was raining. It was it was scary because here we are, kind of pretending to be doctors in our kitchen. However, the comparison between that process that night and what goes on in hospitals is unbelievably night and day. I mean, here you have in chemo, fifteen hours of various hard drugs being pumped into kids and people. And then what we did, which was mix up the oil, uh, heat up some water, and literally put a little drop the size of a grain of rice right under Waldo's tongue. And I'm telling you, within the first hour of me getting home that night, when, when I got home, he was puking, he was sick, he had stopped crawling, he had kind of started to wither up the way kids do on chemo. And within an hour, he was laughing again. Within four hours, he was eating, he was shitting, he was being himself. By the next morning, it was the Waldo that I'd always known. He was back. And so we didn't really look, look back to question if it was a good idea. We just kept going because it seemed to be helping our son. And that's when we began doing our research. And I'm still like inside the wake of that night because I'm still trying to understand exactly what happened and why people don't want to talk about it on a large you know, national scale or even global and, scale. And do you ever look at Waldo and say, that kid is high? No, never. I mean, you said the most apropos thing I, I'd heard in, in that process when I was trying to get the medicine to understand. You said, what people need to know is that when children are taking cannabis oil, they are not getting high. They are feeling normal. 
You know, that's, that's the really important thing people need to remember if they're skeptical or they're worried or they're curious. This helps bring people back to a place where they can function, where they can live their lives, where they, you know, they can eat and, have, and we can have medicine inside their body that promotes healthy cell growth instead of things that just slowly exactly. kill them. And did you notice that once you started giving him the cannabis oil that he didn't need the other like really harsh pharmaceuticals that they would give him for pain and for other anti-nausea, anti-this, anti-that yes. pill? Absolutely. I mean, after a year of chemo, I can say this, he never puked one time after we started giving him cannabis oil on a regular basis. That's an impossibility in and of itself for chemo, but he didn't puke. He never needed one blood transfusion. He never needed one platelet transfusion. He gained weight, you know, at some points. So Walt is kind of a, a really wonderful scenario, but I really attribute all of that to cannabis oil because he wasn't on any other pharmaceuticals during that time. We took him off everything. It's so that interesting, were Brian. I hear this with so, so many people tell me the same thing when yeah. they're taking chemo, that they're gaining weight, that they're not throwing up, that they're <laughs> all, the, all of the, the side effects that. that the doctors warned them about. They're saying, well, we're breezing right through this. And I have a friend right. of mine now that is going through chemo and he just finished his sixth chemo. I mean, you can't even tell this kid is on chemo. And it's unbelievable. I'm, and I'm saying, how are I you know. doing? He goes, I take my CBDs. I'm great. I'm fine. He goes, I don't know yeah, what I people mean, are it, complaining it, about. And yet, and yet our federal government uh, seems to think that there's no medicinal value whatsoever, even though they know patents for Marinol. It's like, I think it's time the conversation changes to what's actually going on, which, again, I'm not wagging my finger at anyone or saying that Western medicine is bullshit. What I'm saying is this is a tool in the toolbox that should absolutely be considered and people should be allowed to consider when dealing with any sickness. Specifically, though, in my case, cancer, chemotherapy, and all of that, it is a fantastic supplement to just bags and bags of pharmaceuticals. It only make people sick. This this stuff makes them very healthy. It, it was normal, like I said, not not only normal, but better than he used to be. He's he's been on he's been on weed, you know, quote unquote, if you want to say, since he was five months old, every day, and he's fantastic. And I stand by that. And I know that makes a lot of people scared, but I think if they hung out with Waldo for a few minutes, they'd understand. There's nothing to be scared. Of. Right. And I, for one, have had the pleasure of spending one-on-one -on -one time with Waldo when you guys came to visit, when you brought him out there. Mm. And he it was yeah. just such a delightful little boy and loves to play and loves to make music. And I just have to say that you guys are the funniest dad and son <laughs> combo I have ever met. And the love that you Damn. guys have for title. each other, it really it blows my mind because you guys – he looks so much like you. I mean, that's not really that surprising. He's your son. But I did but contribute some DNA, yeah. Right. But just having that really cool dad with his really cool mini-me and the little videos that you guys put out of you guys both playing, you know, the xylophone in the room or whatever, yeah. or playing the bongos. We have a good time. I crack up, but you're such, you know, it's it's not often that dads spend that much time with their kids and really appreciate. I think it has a lot to do with, you know, being like older parents or not like a 19 year old parent, but you are, he is like your pal. Like he's I mean, your equal, yeah, you this, know, that's what I love this, about it. Absolutely. Uh, that's very kind of you to say. And, and I'll just say that this whole scenario, this whole situation pulled me out of a very busy life full of lots of accomplishments, lots of success, quote unquote, things I was busy with. I walked away from a lot of that just to spend time with my son because life's short, as we all know. But for real, when you go through something like this, it helps you reprioritize who you spend your time with and why. And again, the reason I'm speaking about this, the reason I'm excited and trying to join the conversation in any way is because to speak on behalf of all of the kids who don't have a voice, to speak on behalf of anybody who doesn't have a voice when it comes to how they treat themselves and what they're going through in the hospital or wherever, this conversation is needed to be had. And I know there are so many like me that are starting to share their story. They're starting to go public with it. And I think that's absolutely essential if this conversation is going to change on a larger scale than just state to state, you know? Well, let's get into I, uh, something a little deeper because you did sure. something. Like it's almost like you had a premonition <laughs> where you got yourself a little video camera and you called it the dad cam. And did. you started filming literally the day that he was born and on. Mm -hmm. And you filmed – you know, yourself in do the doctor's appointment when the doctor said there's something going on with his eye. I mean, you really captured yeah. every moment along your journey and in such a beautiful way. And 
you know, Brian, <laughs> Brian, you've been telling me this for a long time. You know, you have all this footage. What should I do with it? And I said, got to make something. You got to put together a documentary. Mm -hmm. And that yep. has really <laughs> snowballed into something special. And so let's talk about your GoFundMe real fast. You put together a sure, GoFundMe. Sure, I'd love to. And mm -hmm. that is was to help fund the project of the documentary so that the world mm -hmm. can see the truth and see Waldo. And I think it's really powerful when you see a child like Waldo who has gone through this treatment and has survived chemotherapy looking as, you know, as if he never was sick a day in his life. It's a really powerful story. So talk to us about that. Yeah, well, to the documentary, the reason I think it's important to try and share is because words kind of fell us a lot of times. I've had conversations plenty of times in the last two years with people about cannabis. And it sometimes it, you, know, you miss the mark. Sometimes people's own stigma is, is hard to break through. However, when you see a baby and you see a home video and you see a story like this, I didn't know I was shooting a documentary. And to be honest, it was just, I don't know, home movies, man. We all, we all resonate with home movies. It's kind of been our thing for the last century. And I just started filming all of what was like thinking someday maybe he would watch it when he's older and it'd be like, hey, Waldo, this is me, you know, before you were born. Or this is me when I was, when you were just born. Like things he wouldn't remember. And then when he got diagnosed with cancer, I started filming even more. Because I said, this is a time in my life where I'm not going to want to remember this. But this needs to be remembered. Because how else am I going to remember? How, am I, how else am I going to tell the story? A lot of people wouldn't keep recording, but you did. And it's, it's kind of yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and so... So to bring it to bring it to current day, yeah, when you when you recommended that I do something with it, I started thinking differently about this home video footage. And believe it or not, I mean, that was really the beginning of me thinking I needed to share this in a different way than just with my own with my voice. And so uh, a whole beautiful crew of people have met me along the last year and, and, and heard about the dad cam and, and watched footage with me. And now we're putting together this movie. We put together a GoFundMe just to finish editing it because there's hundreds of hours of footage. And thankfully, when we launched the GoFundMe, at 420 on 420, just to kind of bring some, some nice positivity to a day that a lot of people have different opinions about. We beat our goal, like we got like $9,000 in the first day. And so we were blown away effectively. And now we're making this film. We're finishing the film. We're working on it all the time. It's called Waldo on Weed. And when it's done, we're just going to give it away. Because to be honest, I, I don't think this conversation can be sold or bought. It has to be shared. That, that's the only point that I even feel like talking with someone as awesome as you is because we've got to start sharing our stories. And this is one story that I'm obviously very close to. So I'm going to share it and speak about it as openly as I, I can, I guess. Well, I love that. And I'm yeah. so excited about this. We're going to have to take another short break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about how we all can help get Waldo on weed made. <laughs> and so we can all watch it faster because I know you guys want to watch it <laughs> and give you a little more information about how Waldo's doing. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. Dr. Dabber, hurry! Its temperature is shooting past 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's burning up! I'm afraid for this little guy, it's just too late. What caused the problem? Only Dr. Dabber can maintain the perfect temperature for a smooth-tasting, slower burn. This standard vaporizer lost all of its health benefits, sending it up in smoke. So you're telling me that most vapor pens burn so hot they produce smoke, not vapor? Correct! Keep away from those standard vaporizer pens and turn to Dr. Dabber. Doctor's orders. Less heat, <laughs> More flavor. Great websites today need expert web design and development and need to be e-commerce ready and mobile friendly. But building a marketable and profitable website can be an uphill climb. Ready to make your new website or replace your existing website? Think Orange as the new way to get in the black. Orange Hill Development works with Fortune 500 companies and offer the same top quality development service at a fraction of what other providers charge. Brands like Absolute, Carlsberg, and Nestle trust Orange Hill Development. Find out why you should trust your website with Orange Hill. Contact Orange Hill for a consultation today at orangehilldevelopment.com. Educator, author, and advocate, Dr. Mitch Earlywine is here to tackle the burning issues. Author Catherine Hiller and her great new book, Just Say Yes, Marijuana Memoir. So I love the way you use time in the memoir. I started at the present time and I described a visit to my dealer. And then I would go backward in time so that every chapter starts a little bit earlier. 
I do not feel that marijuana has in any way harmed my life. It certainly hasn't led me to the streets. It's led me to a more joyful life experience. Burning Issues, only on CannabisRadio.com. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential, only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back with Cannabis Confidential. I'm your host, Dr. Dina. We have Brian Dwyer on the phone, Waldo's hey, dad. So how is Waldo well, doing today? Well, right now he's currently sleeping, so I'd say he's doing great. He looks really happy. Oh, good, good. You guys aren't <laughs> yeah, but if you want to know, in, in, what's that? You aren't making a musical at the moment? Well, as soon as he wakes up, we'll probably get into some music and some musicals for sure. He was watching Newsy the other day. But as a, as a person, Waldo is fantastic. He's kind of, uh, like I said, he's super healthy. He's got so many friends. I, I'm honored to know him. That's all I can really say when people ask me how Waldo's doing. I'm honored to know him. That is amazing. <laughs> I, I'm just, it just makes me so happy to know that everything went so well. And, and it's so hard to look at a parent look them in the eyes after their child's been diagnosed with something like this and to try to give them hope and to, yeah. and to really pray that this is going to work, you know, and it's, there are some days where I'm like, is this really going to work? Or am I, is this like a placebo effect, you know? But then when I hear it work, it's like, I know I chose the right path and it makes me so happy. It, and it's, what were you going to say? Well, Dina, well, why, why, um, why you're such a special human? is because um, I believe through what you've done, uh, it, it, it leaves the realm of hopes and wishes and prayers. It really does. And, I, and I'm all for wishful thinking, for, for positive thinking, for sure. But this plant is a real thing that's been around long before we ever exiled it. And I think what we're realizing as a culture is that this plant is, is very helpful in a lot of ways to a lot of people. And I, I feel grateful, again, that I was, I'm in a scenario where this worked out okay, that we were given a sense of hope through a plant because There's without so many you, people without, who don't have that, you know, I mean, don't have yes. access. If you wonder why I speak so passionately sometimes it's because again, I'm thinking of all the, the thousands of people that I know right now who are sick and dying because some old rich white person stops is stopping them from getting what they need. I can't stand that. That makes me really upset. So yeah, on behalf of all the Waldos out there and everybody else, it's like, it's time that we change the conversation and start being a little Well, you know, about... that old, rich, white person just got replaced by a uh, middle-aged African-American president of the United States who could actually help everyone, <laughs> but chooses not to. So I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, then let me, let me take it back. Let me take it away from race. Old, rich <laughs> people that have a lot of power that like to use that power to, you know, to keep people sick or at least stop them from getting help. That's not right. We all know yeah, that. absolutely. <laughs> you know more I, than anybody. I think that... You know, especially for you to go into a hospital where they're treating people with chemotherapy, where you know you're giving your child the special, you know, oil that's going to save them, but to walk past everybody else who doesn't have it must be really Truly. hard too. I mean, goddamn, we would sneak that shit into the hospital every every day, every time we'd go, and we'd have this little secret, and we'd kind of feel really good while we were in there. But as soon as we walked out of our hospital room, yeah, I mean, you see kids vomiting in bags. You see kids sleeping, missing half their brain. I mean, I know that this is kind of blunt to say, but seriously, it, you, you really, you can't, you can't go into a kid's hospital or any hospital and not carry that, that weight with you. You know, and, and I wanted to pull those parents aside and say, Hey, there's something, there's something we got that I, I think you want, you want to hear about. I couldn't do that for my own safety, for, for everything. It, it, at the time we couldn't really say, we had to keep our mouths shut. And I've been quiet for almost two years now. So it does feel good to be open and honest especially over here on the East Coast where, like I said, the conversation just is very far behind. Where you Well, go you're very brave, and we really appreciate you speaking out and, and you know, going mm -hmm. public with your story and with everything that you and Danielle have gone through with Waldo. And this little boy is very, very, very special to me because he mm -hmm. is, to me, like really the face of this movement. I mean, he's wow. just such an angelic little boy. Mm -hmm. And how could you really deny someone like that? Just like, you know, the little girl Charlotte with her, her yeah. Gervais syndrome became the face of cannabis for Gervais syndrome. And I think that yeah. Waldo is really going to become the face for cancer, you know, to fight cancer with <laughs> cannabis oil. And I think that's going to wow. help so many. I mean, think about what kind of a legacy he's going to leave to be able to help that many I people. 
I mean, if we can be a part of the conversation in some way, that's a beautiful thing. Everything you just said, that's, that means a lot to me. And I can only ping pong it back and say, it's people like you, people like Brandon up in Oregon, you know, Canada, it's all of the parents that have already come out and spoken that give me the confidence to start speaking too. And so thank you. Well, and where can people whatever find more information about you, Brian? Where can oh, they, where, how can they, they contact you? Sure. If they want to Google Waldo on weed, they're going to see a trailer for a film. They're going to see a GoFundMe where they, if they want, they can donate to help us, you know, finish the film quicker. We're working on it as hard as we can. But that's, that's pretty much it. Waldo on weed. If, if you want to go to a website, I guess, the web address technically would be waldoonweed.org. And there you go. Excellent. Everyone go check out Waldo on Weed and make a donation. Anything over their amount that they don't spend on editing, they're going to donate to nonprofits such as mm-hmm. freedomgrow.org and Parents for Pot, which are two amazing nonprofits yeah. helping people. And so thank you very, yeah, very much. And thank Brian, you. we're uh, out of time. I'm so sad hmm. I could talk to you for an hour, but I think I'm going to have to have you back on. I'm sure that more people want to know information. So if you do have questions for Brian, feel free to send them to me at drdina420 at gmail.com. Make sure you like the show. Give us five stars. Share it with your friends. Share it with anyone you know who's going through something similar so they can learn and help themselves. And if we get enough questions, we're going to have to get Brian back on to answer them for you. So, Brian, thank you so much. And give Waldo a big kiss for me. I certainly will do that, Dina. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and thank you all for listening. Thank you to my producers for making this show so awesome. And join us again next week for another edition of Cannabis Confidential. Time to lighten it up now. I'm lighting mine up. Over and out. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without proper consent of CannabisRadio.com is prohibited.